I am Anansi, keeper of stories. Settle down while I stir the pot. Join me while I spin a tale. Welcome to Anansi Storytime. I'm your host, Chris G. Today we have a story about a poor man who finds himself in an unexpected turn of fortune. Our story is called The Sweep and the Noble Lady, collected by Sir Richard Burton in the Tales of the Arabian Nights, and it is rated R. Our players are Lisa Watson, L.J. Donnell, Will, Andrew Whitby, Matt Olaf Hinton, and John Donnell. Please enjoy. Come, sit, listen. I once heard a story that started like this. There was once a sweep who worked in the sheep slaughterhouses of Mecca. He spent most of his life carrying the blood in the offal to rubbish heaps outside the gates. It came to pass as he went along one day with his ass loaded that he saw the people running away, and one of them stopped at the sweep. Enter this alley, lest haply they slay thee. What aileth the folk running away? This is the harem of one of the notables, and her eunuchs drive the people out of her way and beat them all without respect to persons. Hurry, you must go. So the sweep turned aside with the donkey and stood still, awaiting the dispersal of the crowd. Down the street came a number of eunuchs with staves in their hands, followed by nigh thirty women slaves. Amongst them walked a lady as she were a willow wand or a thirsty gazelle, perfect in beauty and grace and amorous languor, and all were attending upon her. When she came to the mouth of the passage where the sweep stood, she stopped and turned. Come to me, my castrato. What do you need, my lady? She whispered in the eunuch's ear, and he quickly approached the sweep and laid hold of him, whilst another eunuch took the ass and made off with it. The spectators began to flee as the eunuch bound the poor sweep with rope. This, this is not allowed of a law. What hath this poor scavenger done that he should be bound with ropes? Have pity on him and let him go, so Allah might have pity on you. Doubtless the eunuch seized me because their mistress smelt the stink of the awful, and it sickened her. Belike she is with child or ailing, but there is no majesty and there is no might save in Allah, the glorious and the great. Hurry, sweep. Walk with us to the hall of Our Lady. So the man continued walking on behind them until they stopped at the door of a great house. Entering before him, they brought the sweep into a great hall furnished with the finest furniture. I have never in my life seen a place so magnificent. Doubtless they will torture me here until I die and none will know of my death. After a while, they carried the man into a neat bathroom leading out of the hall. As he sat there, in came three slave girls who seated themselves round the poor sweep. Strip off thy filthy rags and tatters. So he pulled off the threadbare clothes. One of the slaves fell a rubbing his legs and feet, whilst another scrubbed his head and a third shampooed his body. When they had made an end of washing the man, they brought him a parcel of fresh clothes. Put these on. By Allah, I know not how. So they came up to the sweep and dressed him, laughing together all the while. <laughs> <laughs> After that, they brought casting bottles full of rose water and sprinkled him therewith. Come with us to the next salon. They entered the next room, a salon decorated with a wealth of paintings and furniture therein. By Allah, I know not how to praise the splendor of such a room. Upon entering, the sweep saw a person seated on a couch of Indian rattan with ivory feet, and before her lay a number of damsels. Come, come over to me and sit by my side. Girls, please bring this man some food, the finest meats and cheeses you can find. I've never seen such a meal. I do not even know the names of these dishes, much less their nature. Never mind that. Please, just eat your fill. Uh. Let us wash our hands, and then I shall have my girls bring us some fruits. Uh. You girl, bring out the wine furniture. We have eaten our fill, and now we wish to lay and drink. So they set on flagons of diverse kinds of wine, and burned perfumes in all the censers while a damsel like the moon rose, served wine to the sound of the smitten strings, and they both drank, the man and the noble lady, till they were swizzed with wine. I fear this is just an illusion of sleep, my lady. If that is so, I do not wish to wake. Hmm. My damsel, please come and prepare a bed for us here. Soon after, she rose and took him by the hand and led him thither, and there the poor sweep lay with her till the morning. I cannot think otherwise but that I am in paradise, or in the vain fantasies of a dream. The delicious fragrance of musk and other perfumes that exhale from you are not of this world. Where do you lodge? In such a poor place. Nothing like this. 
I must go now. Please, take this kerchief filled with some coin and go to the baths with it. If there be but five coppers in here, it will buy me this day my morning meal. Then the man left his new paradise and returned to his poor crib where he opened the kerchief. By Allah, there are fifty mishkals of gold here. I must save them somewhere where they will not be lost. The man buried his gold in the ground and left for the market. I will take just two farthings worth of bread and food so I can sit in this door and break my fast. After eating, the man sat, pondering his case, and did so until the time of the afternoon prayer. <laughs> my mistress calleth for thee. Please follow me. <laughs> my lady, I have brought your guest. May we enter now? Yes, please come in. The slave girl carried the man in before the lady, and he bent down and kissed the ground at her feet. Please rise. The evening draws near, and we must eat. Please bring us the food and fruit and wine like we had the night before. Prepare us a bed as well. So they ate together and drank their fill, and again they lay with one another throughout the night. I must leave. Take this kerchief and go. By Allah, this kerchief has fifty dinars inside. I shall take it home and bury it like I did with the first. This condition continued eight days running, going in to her at the hour of afternoon prayer and leaving her at daybreak. On the eighth night, as the sweep lay with his lady, one of her slave girls came running in. Wake up! Arise and go into yonder closet! Do not come out until we tell you to do so. As you wish. So he rose and went into the closet which looked over the street, and soon after he heard a great clamor and tramp of horses. The sweep looked out of the window. There he saw a young man come riding up as he were the rising moon on the night of fullness. This young lord was attended by a number of servants and soldiers who were about him on foot. He alighted at the door, entered the salon, and found the lady seated on the couch. He kissed the ground between her feet. I have missed you so, my lady. He then came up to her and kissed her hands, but she would not speak to him. Your beauty is without compare. I have ridden for many days to see you, and only you. Won't you gaze upon me once more? Let me hear your soft and holy voice. He continued patiently to humble himself and soothe her and speak her fair till he made his peace with her, and they lay together that night. The next morning the soldiers came for him, and he mounted and rode away. The lady approached the closet that concealed the poor sweep. Sawest thou yonder man? Yes. He is my husband, and I will tell thee what befell me with him. It came to pass one day that we were sitting, he and I, in the garden within the house. He rose from my side and was absent for a long while. After a time, I grew tired of waiting and said to myself, Most like he is in the privy. So I arose and went to the water closet, but not finding him there, went down to the kitchen where I saw a slave girl. When I inquired for him, she showed him to me lying with one of the cook maids. Hereupon I swore a great oath that I assuredly would do adultery with the foulest and filthiest man in Mecca. The day my eunuch laid hands on thee, I had been four days going round about the city in quest of the one who should answer to this description, but found none fouler nor filthier than thy good self. So I took thee, and there passed between us that which Allah fordained to us, and now I am quit of my oath. <laughs> If, however, my husband return yet a pin to the cookmaid and lie with her, I will restore thee to thy lost place in my favors. I understand, my lady. Take this <laughs> coin and please go. So the man went out from her and ran to the Kaaba. It was the season of the Meccan pilgrimage. Whilst the people made circuit about the holy house, this man laid hold of the covering of the Kaaba and wept from the bottom of his heart. Praise Allah, extolled and exalted be he. Make my lady's husband return to the cookmaid, that haply I might be again admitted to her favors. I beseech thee, O Allah, that she may once again be wroth with her husband, and that I may know her. A company of the pilgrims heard him, and seized him, and carried him to the emir of the pilgrims, after a sufficiency of blows. O oh, emir, we, we found this fellow in the holy places, places saying thus and thus. thus. O oh, Amir, I conjure thee, by the virtue of the Apostle, whom Allah bless and preserve, hear my story, and then do with me as thou wilt. Tell thy tale forthright, for such words against a holy union should never be spoken in such a place. The poor man told his story to the Amir, weeping all the while. When the Amir of the pilgrims heard the sweep's story, he sat in silence for a short while. He then got up and untied the sweep and turned to the bystanders. Allah upon you, go and pray for this man, for indeed he is excusable.
I hope you enjoyed the tale. When you return, perhaps I will tell you another. The tale of The Sweep and the Noble Lady was reinterpreted by John Bachman. For more information on Anansi Storytime, visit us at anansistorytime.com. Follow us on Twitter at Anansi Storytime, and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Anansi Storytime. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.